Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we are going to solve an example on real numbers. But before we start, let us understand a theorem. Let P be a prime number. If P divides A square, then P divides A, where A is a positive integer. So there are many conditions given over here. First of all, they have mentioned that P is a prime number. So let me write down what all things are mentioned over here. So P is a prime number. A square is a perfect square number because any number squared or raised to the power of 2 is a perfect square number. And A is a square root of A square and it should be a positive integer. Now here to explain this theorem, let me take some values. That is, I'll take the prime number as equal to 2. And perfect square numbers are 1, 4, 9, 16 and so on. So I'm going to take the number 4 in this case. And a is the square root of a square. So square root of 4 is 2 and 2 is also a positive integer. So just for an example's sake, I have taken these numbers. Now according to the theorem, it states that if p divides a square. So let us see if p divides a square, that is a square over p. So in our example, we have taken a square as 4 over p is 2. So this is perfectly divisible, we get it as 2. Then p also divides a. So let us see, a is divided by p. We have taken a as 2 and here we have p also as 2. So this is also perfectly divisible, which is 1. So in general, it states that if any prime number divides a square number, then it will definitely divide its square root number also. So you can take n number of examples here. So you can take the perfect square number as 9 and you can take the prime number as 3. As you can see, 9 over 3 perfectly divides and you get 3. And let us take the square root of 9, that is 3. So 3 over 3, again this is perfectly divisible. So this is the condition. Now using this theorem, let us start solving the given examples below. Prove that square root of 5 is irrational. Irrational numbers are the one which cannot be written in the form p over q. That is like a fraction or for example a over p. So you can know in details about the rational and irrational numbers by clicking on this link. So in this video I have discussed in details about these type of numbers. Now let us consider that square root of 5 is rational. Let us contradict this statement and go opposite to it. So assume square root of 5 is equal to a over b, which is in the rational form. And another condition for a and b is they have to be coprimes. Coprimes are the numbers which have just one as a highest common factor. So for example, if I have 2 over 3, they cannot be divided further. So they have to be 2 1 times and 3 1 times. 1 is a common factor. But if I write it as 2 over 4, they are not coprimes. But I can still reduce this fraction because 2 and 4 go in the same table. So 2 1 times and 2 2 times. 1 over 2. Now 1 over 2 cannot be further simplified. So this again becomes a coprime pair. So we have to make sure that whatever a and b we are going to take are coprimes. They are the simplest fractions. Now after this, I am going to just go for a cross multiplication, that is b multiplies with square root of 5. So I can write it as a is equal to b square root of 5. Then one step further, let us square on both the sides of the equal to sign and we write it this way by squaring. So this simplifies as a square is equal to, now distributing the powers, that is 2 is given to the b as well as to the square root of 5 and we can write it as b to the power of 2 times square root of 5 to the power of 2. This is done by using the laws of indices. Now let us further simplify this and write it as a square is equal to b square times square root of 5 square is 5 itself. So we have a square is equal to 5 b square. Now, let us divide on both the sides by 5. So 
So, this is 5 and this is 5. So, now we get it as a square over 5 is equal to now 5 and 5 divides each other and we have just b square. Now looking at this fraction we remember that the theorem stated if a prime number divides a square number then it obviously divides the square root term as well. Now here the prime number is 5 and a square is a square number. So let us write it as a over 5 that is 5 divides the square root of a square and let us give it a term or a constant as k because we do not know what is the value of a it could be anything so we can get a divided by 5 as any number so we are going to take it as some number k now let us again cross multiply this and write it as a is equal to 5k so right now we have generated two equations one is a is equal to 5k and another one was a square is equal to b square times 5. Now the next thing I am going to do is substitute the value of a in this place that is wherever a is present I am going to put 5k. So in place of a I am going to put 5k and I am going to square it is equal to b square times 5. So now this again 2 distributes to 5 and it goes to k as well. So we have 5 square times k square is equal to b square times 5. So this becomes 25 k square is equal to 5 b square or dividing both the sides by 5 5k square is equal to b square or I am just going to write it in a proper way that is b square is equal to 5k square or writing it again as a fraction as we did over here. I am going to divide on both the sides by 5. So we have here b square over 5 is equal to k square. Now again by referring to the theorem, if a prime number divides a perfect square number, then it divides its square root number as well. That means we have a number over here 5 which is dividing A as well as B which contradicts the statement that A and B were co-primes. That means A was only divisible by 1 and B was only divisible by 1 if they were supposed to be rational numbers. But here we can see that a is divisible by 5 and b is divisible by 5. Since our assumption went wrong, we have to say that square root of 5 is an irrational number. It cannot be a rational number. So hence we can write, since a and b have 5 as a common factor now, this contradicts the fact that a and b are co-primes. This contradiction has arisen because of our incorrect assumption that square root of 5 is rational. And here we use this method which is called as proof by contradiction where we are going to contradict the given statement and use the given theorem above. And finally showing that the given number is a irrational number. So let us write over here a final statement. So this concludes that square root of 5 is irrational. Now let us look at the next question. Prove that 3 plus 2 square root of 5 is irrational. Now again we are going to contradict the statement by contradiction and write it as assume that 3 plus 2 root 5 is equal to a over b and again a over b are co-primes and integers. A and B are co-primes that means the highest common factors of A and B is just 1. No other number should be able to divide A and B other than 1. And A and B have to be integers. Now let us rearrange this equation by taking 3 on other side of the equal to sign. So it becomes 2 root 5 is equal to A over B minus 3. 
Now taking the LCM that is over 1, we take here as B and here as B by taking the common denominators. So this one simplifies as A minus 3B over now the common denominator, both the denominators are b, so we get it as b. And on this side we have 2 root 5. Next, let us bring this 2 on other side of the equal to sign, so that only the root 5 stays on one side of the equation. And here we have a minus 3b and 2 goes to the denominator and multiplies with b, so we have 2b. Since a and b we have assumed they are integers, we have this entire fraction ending up as a rational number that is of the form p over q. That means on the right hand side we have a rational number and we know that square root of 5 is an irrational number. So on this side we have irrational number. Irrational number cannot be equal to rational number. Hence again by proof by contradiction we can write 3 plus 2 root 5 is an irrational number proved using proof by contradiction. And our statement was contradicted which we had assumed that 3 plus 2 root 5 is a rational number. Now using the same method let us solve the next example. Prove that the following are irrationals. Now there are three sub questions in this question and remember that there are two ways of proving that the given number is irrational. One is the way we use the theorem in the previous example where we saw that a square was divided by a prime number then its square root will also be divisible by prime number. The second method is where we try to make the right hand side of the equation equal to left hand side. And if it doesn't matches, then we are going to say that the number is irrational. So we can use either of the two methods. Now for this example, I'm going to use the second method that is proving that irrational numbers are not equal to rational numbers. Now coming back to this question, I'm going to take 1 over square root of 2 is equal to a over b. That is, I'm assuming that 1 over square root of 2 is a rational number and a over b are co-primes. Now the next step is I'm going to take square root of 2 over 1 that is I'm just going to reciprocate it. So on the right hand side also it becomes b over a. Now we get it as square root of 2 is equal to b over a. But we know that b over a is a format of rational numbers and we also know the fact that any square root cube root, fourth root or nth root of a number except for perfect square, perfect cubes and so on all give you irrational number. So here in this case square root of 2 is a irrational number and that is a fact. So let me write over here and irrational number cannot be equal to rational number. Hence the assumption which we made that 1 over square root of 2 is a rational number is incorrect. So we can write over here Hence, 1 over square root of 2 is a rational number proved using proof by contradiction. And if you like, you can try using the theorem method as well. Here you have to prove that 7 square root of 5 is an irrational number. So we are going to contradict the statement and say that 7 root 5 is a rational number by writing it as a a over b form, where a and b are co-primes. Now I am just going to cross multiply and send the 7 on the other side of the equal to sign and write it as square root of 5 is equal to a over 7b. And this right hand side of the equation is a rational number and on the left hand side of the equation we have irrational number. So irrational number cannot be equal to rational number. Hence again by proof by contradiction we have proved that 7 square root of 5 has to be a irrational number. Let us move on to the last question of this exercise. Prove that 6 plus square root of 2 is an irrational number. Again we are going to contradict this statement and write it as let 6 plus square root of 2 
be a rational number where we are going to write it as a over b and a over b are co-primes and integers. Now let us keep the square root on one side of the equation and send the 6 on the other side of the equal to sign. So we get square root of 2 is equal to a over b minus 6. Now taking the common LCMs, this is over 1 times b times b taking this denominator. So we get it on the right hand side as a over b minus 6 times b gives you 6b over b and combining the denominators and numerators we get a minus 6b over b and on the left hand side we have the square root 2. Now this fraction on the right hand side is of the form p over q or in the rational form. So on the right hand side we have rational number but using fact we can say that square root of 2 is irrational number. So again the irrational number cannot be equal to the rational number. We have contradicted the statement that is why we are getting an answer of this form. Hence our assumption saying that 6 plus square root of 2 is equal to rational number is incorrect. So finally we write a statement as this contradiction has arisen because of our incorrect assumption that 6 plus root 2 is rational. Hence 6 plus root 2 is an irrational number proved using proof by contradiction. I hope you have understood all the steps and like the video. So if you are liking my videos like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.